Uh, hello everyone. Good evening. Uh, thanks for joining the meeting. Okay. Uh, in this session, we'll discuss about this uh, Azure Databricks project. Okay. Already uh, we discussed uh, just the intro about this uh, document, right? Like how we are uh, planning to move the data from uh, Azure, uh, so means sorry, on-prem to Azure. So here uh, we need a uh, few of the required resources to move the data from on-prem to Azure, right? Actually, we are planning to uh, move the uh, data from on-prem to Azure, right? Here, uh, uh, I'm planning to uh, create one on-prem VM. This on-prem uh, VM, uh, we are establishing the file system data, maybe like uh, uh, text data or CSV data or parquet to data or AVR to data, right? So uh, let me uh, create few of the CSV files like uh, customer.csv, emp.csv, order.csv, and discounts.csv, something... Uh, uh, let me create few of the files into the on-prem VM. So after that, uh, we'll go and uh, create the Azure Data Factory. So once Azure Data Factory workspace launched successfully, so the first step, uh, we need to create the self-hosted integration runtime, right? So with the help of the self-hosted integration runtime, we are going to connect the uh, on-prem to Azure. This self-hosted integration runtime is going to establish the connection from on-prem to Azure. It acts act like a gateway. Right, right. So at the moment of the on-prem VM, while well, uh, first we need to install the integration runtime into the on-prem VM, and we need to give the self-host integration runtime key into the on-prem VM so that uh, uh, the connection will be successful from the on-prem VM to Azure. Right. So we already seen right uh, while uh, moving the data from on-prem to VM, there is access denied issue. So we need to. Uh, run one PowerShell script for this uh, DMG CMD. Uh, we need to disable it. Uh, we'll see. All right. After that, once the uh, the data uh, means the connection will be successful from on-prem to Azure Data Factory. Right. Here we need to create the ADLS Gen2. So we are uh, moving the data from uh, on-prem to Azure. The first initial step we are moving the data into ADLS Gen2. Here I am maintaining the multiple layers. Like the first one is landing layer. We can call it as a raw layer or a pre-process layer. And final one is the process layer, right? Depends upon the project to scope. So maybe the naming convention is different. Some of the projects they are uh, they mention as a raw layer. Uh, and some of the projects they are using as a landing layer, right? Obviously, uh, we are achieving the same thing. Okay, right. Let me create the same naming conventions like landing layer, pre-process layer, and process layer, right? So... Our destination is a synopsis. Synopsis uh, synops is one of the data warehouse concept. So here we are moving the data uh, from on-prem to synops, right? Synops. Our source is on-prem uh, file system. Our destination is synops, right? And uh, we are, and also we'll uh, uh, integrate with the Azure Databricks as well. Here uh, we are uh, writing the PySpark code and uh, um, read the data and uh, uh, write the data into Synapse. Before write the data into the Synapse, we'll apply the multiple transformations, right? We'll see one by one. And also, uh, obviously, while we are reading the data from the ADLS uh, Gen 2 to the Azure Databricks, we need to uh, restart the app registration, right? So first, we need to create the mount point. Then only we can read the data into the PySpark from the ADLS Gen 2, right? So then we can apply the transformations based upon business need. Right, and also we need logic apps for uh, um, uh, for receiving the notifications. Right, we'll see uh, today, and this logic app, uh, apps is going to help to get the notification from the email, and uh, we need the final one is the keyword. It was obviously a few of the resources are having some sen sensory information, right? Uh, like um, ADLS Gen two having the key, uh, Synapse having the connection string or username password. And uh, these app registrations and uh, this information we are going to inject into the keyword. That keyword we can use into the pipeline. Okay, right. This is the um, actually we are planning to do the process. So, so this is the one high high level thing. Okay, we are already discussed about this high level process, right? So here uh, our source is on prem. So in the on prem, let me. Uh, create a few of the files, CSV files, like customer.csv, emp.csv, order.csv, and uh, sales.csv. Can you please confirm? Is it my voice is clear or any issue from my side? 
Oh, what is clear? Right. Thank you. So here I am entering the on prem. So on prem, uh, we are going to maintain some of the CSV file. Uh, like uh, cust.csv, emp.csv, order.csv, sales.csv. So once the on-prem, um, the setup is ready, we'll create the uh, uh, Azure Cloud required resources. So first one is the ADL SGN2. Here we are metering the multiple layers, right? landing layer, pre-process layer, and the process layer. Some of the projects may be the main naming conventions different, raw layer, or bronze layer, or silver layer, OK? Here, uh, we'll create the ADF with the help of self host integration runtime. We can able to uh, move the data from on-prem to ADL SGN2 under the raw layer. This raw layer having the uh, uh, initial data, right? Whatever we are doing the initial data, uh, we are going to inject into the landing layer. This landing layer or raw layer, it having the bulk of data, right? It having the bulk of data. Maybe the data having the duplicates, null values, it having something, right? Okay, so once the data is successfully moved from on-prem to uh, ADLS Gen2 on the raw layer, here we are going to uh, introduce the Databricks concept. So with the help of Databricks, so first we, uh, we are creating the Databricks workspace. Next, we are going to create the cluster that is all-purpose cluster, right? It, uh, we are going to do the development, right? So we need an all-purpose cluster. Here, uh, uh, we need to create one uh, all-purpose cluster. Once the cluster is available, means once the cluster is up, right? So we need to create the first step is the mount point, right? Obviously, uh, you guys are already aware of, right? Uh, uh, while accessing the data from blob storage or ADL SGN2, we need a mount point, right? Mount point. So first, uh, we'll create the mount point. Once the mount point is created successfully, so Next, the first step is we are going to uh, read the data from the raw layer. Raw layer. Here we are applying. Uh, we are we are doing some uh, some things like uh, we, what we can say like uh, uh, removing the duplicates and uh, avoiding the null values. Like the way we are filtering the data, right? Like the way we are filtering the data from the raw layer into the data bricks. So the quality data. Finally, the quality data, we are going to move into the pre-process layer or branch layer, right? The quality data, we are moving into the pre-process layer or branch layer. Again, again, I'm going to write the Databricks PySpark code. So to get this uh, quality code from the process layer, here I'm applying the multiple transformations based upon the business you, uh, need, like uh, uh, joining the multiple tables or uh, applying the dimensions. Uh, maybe uh, depends upon uh, business use case, we are applying the multiple transformation and final uh, uh, good data we are moving into the uh, process layer, right? Process layer, right? And after the process layer, whatever the client wanted data, we are moving into the synapse, right? We are moving the wanted data into the synapse. Synapse means synapse is our destination, means our data variables. Our source is on-prem file system, our destination is Synapse. So we need to achieve this end-to-end -end flow, right? Here, we need on-prem file system and Azure Data Factory and ADLS Gen2 and Databricks and Synapse and Keywild, right? These, re these uh, resources are mandatory to achieve this. And also, we need a logic apps as well while uh, getting the alert mechanisms. So, uh, alert emails and all. So obviously in real time, so what, if there is an issue with uh, any pipelines and all, uh, right, if maybe maximum 19% uh, uh, every day we are receiving the alerts, right? Something maybe some pipelines got failed to networking issues or connectivity issues or any servers down or maybe to read the data from the sources and write the data and destination. Maybe there is a multiple scenarios to fail the pipelines, right? So for this, we need a logic apps to get the alert mechanism. So we'll, we'll implement this logic apps today. Okay, right. The first step uh, we need to uh, do, uh, the first initial step is, we need to move the data from on-prem to ADLS Gen2. We need to move the data from on-prem to ADLS Gen2. For moving the data from on-prem to ADLS Gen2, we need to create the self host integration runtime. That is the first one. And second one is, we need to create the pipeline and under the pipeline, we need to add the multiple activities, right? Multiple activities like lookup activity. Obviously, obviously in real time, 
we need to maintain the metadata, right? We need to maintain the metadata into either SQL Server or Synapse. Either SQL Server or Synapse. Mandatory, we need to maintain the metadata. That metadata having the that metadata having the uh, status. That metadata having the status, whether it is a ready state or success or failure, right? If there was stored procedure, so we can able to uh, uh, see the uh, status, right? See the status here. For the first step, we need uh, multiple activities. Like the first one is a lookup activity. This lookup activity is obviously uh, in the Azure Synapse. Um, or Azure Synapse or Azure SQL, maybe depends your client requirement. Maybe they are going to maintain a destination, maybe Synapse or SQL, right? So here, let me uh, create the one metadata into the destination, maybe Synapse or SQL. Once the metadata is ready, so after that, uh, we'll create a few procedures for uh, updating the status and resetting the status. So this lookup activity is going to refer the metadata for the tables or data so right so we need for this we need dedicated data set for the lookup activity next we need a for each activity obviously we are iterating the multiple items right for this we need for each activity so under the for each activity uh, let me uh, add one copy activity for this copy activity ob obviously we having the source and sync right source and sync source we need to create dedicated data set right specifying the uh, our source means on-prem file system sync obviously ADLS gen 2 under raw data right so once the copy activity is done uh, we uh, let me uh, or let, we need to create a procedure success store procedure and fail store procedure so uh, out of the for each activity we need to uh, create one more uh, activity that is reset to store procedure activity for uh, resetting the our metadata if the pipeline is successful that means for each activity is successful our status should be uh, ready right once the for each activity is success the uh, status should be reset as ready. If there is any uh, failure with any of the uh, table, so this uh, our metadata uh, is showing as few of the success and few of the uh, things are failing. All right? Okay. And, par and parallelly, uh, we we'll maintain the uh, logic apps for out of the for each activity, we we'll maintain the logic apps to get the alert mechanism. If there is any, some situation, uh, if uh, Procedure uh, went to fail, right? So we need uh, um, to get the alert mechanism. So for this, we need a logic apps, right? Okay, right. Uh, uh, this is the next step uh, we are going to do into the Databricks. So I have already script uh, for creating the metadata and inserting the data into metadata. And already I have the few procedure, right? For updating the uh, Store processor activity and resetting the store processor activity. I have two uh, procedures handy. So, right. Let me uh, first create the uh, on prem virtual missions, right? Let me create virtual mission. Here, I'm going to create one Windows mission. Scroll down. Let me create one resource group. Test RG. Virtual mission name on prem. On-prem VM, on-prem VM region. So next availability option, no infrastructure identity required, okay. Next image, next uh, security type, let me select the standard image. See all images. Okay, uh, scroll down, SQL Server 2019 on uh, Windows Server, okay. Here, Gen 2, Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 1, Gen 1. Okay, Gen 2, SQL Server 2019, Enterprise on uh, Windows Server 2019, database engines only. Okay, Windows Server 2019. Right. See, Gen 2 only for, okay, let me select Gen 1. Okay. So next size. So two VCP is enough for 8 GP memory. Okay. We are going to charge monthly 10,000. Okay. Let me give the username.
Okay, so obviously uh, for selecting the virtual mission windows, so we already be right double create and it is the Linux uh, uh, twenty two. Okay, disk. Okay, SSD and uh, for me, it's networking. Okay, let me take uh, automatic uh, uh, VNet uh, IP address here and let's see everything. Okay, next to management. Keep it these as these things advance. Okay. SQL server settings. Uh, okay. SQL authentication enable. Uh, your wish. Tags. Review create. Obviously, it will take some time. I think uh, maybe two minutes. If it is a uh, when line X, um, it will take less than a minute to create. Okay, parallelly, uh, let me take another uh, a new tab. Okay, here, uh, data factory. Let me search data factory. Okay, data factory. Create data factory. Okay, on prem uh, data factory something name right okay someone is already taken okay right next right review create Still, it is in deployment in progress. Great. Parallelly, let me take another new tab for creating this uh, ADLS Gen 2 storage account. Create the storage account. Let me put all resources into one resource group. SRG storage account name on prem uh, data to ADLS gen redundancy LRS enough advance scroll down. There is an option called hierarchical namespace. We need to check this box networking. Data protection, encryption, review, and finally create the storage account. Okay. All right. Data factory is created successfully. Scroll down, click on the launch studio. It will be redirected to the another new tab. Right. Still, it is in progress. Okay, right. ADLS Gen two also ready. Let me create one container. The container name is global. Under global, so we'll maintain the we'll maintain few of the layers like uh, raw layer, raw layer, branch layer, something. Okay, add directory. Uh, raw layer. So branch layer. And uh, Silver layer. Right? Okay, right. 
Let me take another new tab for this uh, keyword. Okay. Create a keyword. Resource group is existing on test RG. Keyword name on prem key word. Right. Test. Right. Next. Let me select the word access policy. Here, create policy. Click on the create policy. Uh, configure from template. Let me select the key secret certificate management. I'm going to give the permissions like this. And let's, let me select the principal. Okay. So we need to uh, give the uh, data factory name here. Okay. Right, here is the factory name. Right. So this is our factory name. Let me copy it and paste here. Right. Okay. Click on next, next, create. Final review, create. Still, VM is in implementing progress. Okay. And parallelly, let me open a new tab and uh, create the synopsis here. Um, synops, or I say. Data warehouse. Let me data warehouse. Synops analytic is different. Uh, SQ, I think uh, SQL dedicated pool, I guess. Okay, dedicated SQL pool. Formally SQL data warehouse, right? Create. Scroll down. Let me select the existing resource group. SQL pool, test pool, and server. Let me create one new server. Same like SQL server. Same like SQL server. Earlier we already uh, tried, right? Same like whatever we are doing in SQL. Same same thing uh, here I'm doing. Server name. Mm. On prem server or else, sorry, destination server. Okay, I think already uh, the server name is already in use. Right, east US. Okay, they use SQL authentication. Here I'm giving username and password. Click on OK. Okay, a thousand RCPs uh, selected performance level. General, okay, first per hour uh, they are charging uh, 11,000, sorry, 1100 rupees. Uh, okay. Now, per hour, they are charging 118. Okay. okay, fine. Apply. Next, uh, networking. No access, additional settings. Mm -hmm. And none. I don't want any uh, existing data. Let me keep it as none only. Next, tags. And review create. Per hour, they are charging 118 rupees. Create. Let me go back and check the weather. Yes, so the VM is up. Sorry, the VM is created. Go to resources. Click on connect. Okay. Um, 
let me uh, copy the IP address. Open RDP in local machine, remote desktop connection. Here I'm pasting the uh, public IP. Click on connect. It's asking the username and password, right? Click on S. Yes, uh, VM is up. Now I'm able to log in the VM successfully. Okay. It will take some time to load the, all those things because it is a Windows, right? Like, let me minimize this and uh, go back to the data factory. The data factory. We need uh, for connectivity from the on-prem to Azure. We need a self-host integration runtime, right? Runtime, right? Let me create the self-host integration runtime. So here I am going to create the self-host integration runtime. Click on continue. Self-host integration runtime. Click on continue. Uh, let me give the name as self-hosted uh, IR. Right. Create. Right. It's showing us some options like uh, settings, notes, auto updates. Uh, uh, we need uh, this key, right? We need this key. Before that, we need to download the integration runtime into the Windows Virtual Mission, right? Let me open the Windows Virtual Mission. We already seen right last time. Let me do the same process. I'll click on the local server and uh, click on this IE. And let me off this uh, issue. Sorry. Okay, okay. Open Internet Explorer. Okay. and continue, confirm and start policy. Right. Let me um, self-hosted integration, right? Or as integration runtime. So Azure integration runtime download. Download Microsoft integration runtime from Apisha. Scroll down. There is an option called download. Click on the download option. Uh, it will show the multiple options. So whichever version you want, you can select it. Let me select the latest one. Scroll down and click on download. It will take some time to download and set up this process. Okay. Okay, panel uh, let me minimize this and uh, we go back to the personal system. Let me open the SQL Server Management Studio in my PC. Obviously, it will also take some time, right? Okay, again, let me go back to this uh, Windows mission. Okay. Uh, let me click on the download option. Okay, right. It's downloaded. Click on this integration runtime. Now it's preparing to install. It will take some time. Click on next. 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 Install. 